can at least start our. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> okay, here we are. <laughs> the, the big question of the day. The, the Ask Sandy question. All right. What is massage? Manual therapy versus massage versus all the various uh, styles and forms of massage. People will get lost in what's therapeutic massage, medical massage, Swedish, <sighs> blah, blah. So we'll start with, I think you were saying everything starts with the understanding what manual therapy is. Manual therapy is the use of a practitioner's body, hmm. hands, forearms, feet, um, depending on the system or the style, to affect a therapeutic change in their client's patient body. Mm -hmm. All right. So manual therapy is that. It's is the, the umbrella term of yeah. therapist uses their body to create a ideally a positive effect. Yes. In a client or patient. And that can be any part of the body. It can be hands. It can be uh, feet. The practitioner can use any part of their body to cause this. And they can use various techniques depending on scope of practice. Yes. Right. So they, so can, right. they can pop a joint or they can do stretches or they can blah, blah, blah. Okay. So under that huge umbrella of manual therapy, there are some subdivisions that have occurred. Um, massage is interesting in that it really doesn't have a beginning. Right. You know, um, I've been working with the International Consortium of Man Manual Therapies to try to create a better interface and in terminology and perspective mm. and so that we can work together. And uh, each of those disciplines that were involved talked about their history and massage has always been you know it doesn't have a clear cut on this date you know still did something the which, idea of using touch for healing yeah. has been part of humanity since we ever came into existence versus you can point specifically to the founder of chiropractic yes. as we know it today. Yes. We can point to the founders of physical therapy as we know it today. Even, I mean, even like traditional westernized medicine with, um, you know, the Greek influence and all that. But, but you're, yeah, that's an interesting point you had brought up that massage doesn't have a central point or founder no. that can kind of be always pointed to as the main influencer of how it's manifested. There's been, so there's legacy, there's mm. cultural legacy, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, person-focused legacy, um, but there isn't a start. But the cultural legacies would usually stem from uh, a cultural perspective of healing in general yeah medicine and healing so traditional chinese medicine and its influence on massage versus through ama but ama as part of that right? yeah like and that's what happened the problem that has happened i mean we the history is fantastic and unique and convoluted um but Overall, what has happened is, is that various cultures had healing disciplines, and it was a, a holistic discipline that encompassed what we consider as uh, body, mind, spirit, um, and pieces of that, as history has evolved, pieces of that have been separated from the discipline. It, all of them on some level yeah. would have, because as you're saying, I mean, or you did say when we were talking prior, that, I mean, in the end, all we have is the human body. That's right. To assess, to use as the instrument and as the, the, the focus of trying to create a response yeah. for healing and well-being. 
And so in many of these cultures, if you go to the, you know, as far into any the history of any civilization, you're going to see the origins of their healing practices. And nearly all of them use some kind of touch, um, herbal, mm -hmm. uh, oils, um, water or hydrotherapy approaches, thermal-based approaches. Mm -hmm. There's always, and it could be more or less or unique to uh, certain regions what you had available. That's right. But they tended to have a lot, and touch is part of that. So the, the manual therapy has evolved over the centuries by taking, by separating the discipline apart. Right. All right, so the manual part of a whole body system has become its own thing, hmm. manual therapy. And of that, there have been pieces of that that have uh, targeted you know, the skeletal system or the nervous system or whatever. Became, it became its philosophy. Mm -hmm. Massage as a, in a, approach is a manual therapy. Massage therapy, however, uh, has emerged as a um, system in and of itself that has uh, cultural overlap, uh, has legacy overlap, it has, um, you know, scientific now, which is is really guiding a lot of what we do right now is we've got evidence research evidence informed type practices that has changed uh, a lot of our philosophy um, because new information ha has us think different so what I do with my hands or my forearm or my feet I can only push pull twist all of the systems if it's manual therapy that's all they can do apply a force into the soft tissues yes that creates a stress that elicits a response that's right now um and part of the confusion being if we were going to call what we teach therapeutic massage right we, yeah. we title it as therapeutic massage because it's outcome focused Associated with what you use, but if we people ask all the time, what's what kind of massage? I know is that, and in saying therapeutic massage, all we really mean is that we take all these tools and use them in a way that is focused towards you know the overarching outcomes, which tend to always what be relaxation stress management, pain management, and mobility. Right. Some kind of mix maybe, but then some of the confusion that I'm trying to get to is the titles of culturally specific forms that maybe are associated with Ayurvedic or traditional Chinese, Japanese, so like Shiatsu versus Ama. You know, there's but, Polynesian. Every yeah, every culture, every culture had, something. had something. The ones that tended to be, that got in vogue in the Western world. But then even more hyper specific ones that, in the most general sense, will get called medical massage or sports massage. Oh yeah, right. And just kind of trying the goal being how do we kind of try to address all that confusion because it is. It's confusion. Yeah. It is confusing. And my basic answer on the, on, on the back end of all this is that massage therapy is the, um, a whole body associated manual therapy approach that we find that's uses, that's done in a systematic way in a about usually an hour ish period of time there's kind of a time component with a lot of these therapies too right well see so. massage ther massage therapy uh, is a use of massage in a therapeutic way yeah. um, which means 
it's a movement towards or a support for health and well-being and quality of life. There's your therapy. Mm -hmm. A physical therapist can use massage. Mm -hmm. They might call it soft tissue manipulation. Right. Or they might call it myofascial release. Yeah. So the they may use tools. Yeah. But and the, their or their hands with the goal being, oh, we gotta get the connective tissue more pliable. Yeah. yeah. But massage has evolved. Mm -hmm. Massage therapy has evolved in such a way that it embraces the things that you had mentioned. And mm -hmm. one important component is time. Yeah. Um, as I was working with all these professionals from all over the globe, these manual therapy experts, um, one of the big differentiators is that we had time and that we could, we, we have evolved to work within the health enhancement, wellness, um, quality of life arena as opposed to coming from a pathological trying to to find what's wrong and reverse that to let's work on sustaining what's working well and nudge through mimic normal mimic normal uh, anatomy physiology towards this as uh, high a quality of well-being that somebody can have. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be sick per se. You don't have to have something wrong mm -hmm. in order for massage therapy to be beneficial. In the end, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the environment, regardless of the health and adaptive capacity of the client, the overarching goal being, can I help this person feel and function as good as possible, Absolutely. as well as possible, within certain ranges. If it's pro sports, duh. If it's oncology, ah. But the the philosophy is um, assessing the individual, the circumstances, and the intention being usually a whole body approach of helping facilitate as many aspects of the body to function as ideally as possible. So that's that mimic normal thing that you said. Yeah, and you know what? Can, muscles and connective tissue need to be pliable and lubricated, and joint capsules need to be pliable and lubricated in order to function appropriately. The nerves and the blood supply and the fluid movement dynamics are reliant upon the pliability and movement of the soft tissues to function appropriately. Breathing yep. as a big part of the mind-body yes. interface. And then you were talking earlier about how in the end much of what can actually be concretely said about massage and how it actually affects the body is related to the autonomic nervous system, mm -hmm. right? And at sensory stimulation, that's what mm. we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we and we work on the sensations that go into the central nervous system, that are processed, and then there is a response that comes back. That can be a motor response to the muscles, and joints, or it could be a, a hormonal response or an endocrine response. But see, people want to make they want to be specific yeah and massage therapy has great benefits but they're generalized it's inherently general and that's our power though that right? is our power our greatest power is the longer duration of therapy that time that you mm -hmm. talked about that is more generalized that and works on the whole body yeah. thinks about as many parts as possible all at once that's that's our big special strength. And it's the holism. Yeah. It's the client-centered approach. And right. it doesn't mean that we don't narrow down to mm. try to, like I say, nudge a physiological response or a, um, an improved movement, mm -hmm. you know, in a little bit of increased flexibility or whatever it is on that. But mostly the general massage that moves all the tissues um, 
and moves all the joints and has a rhythm and a pattern to it that is that is uh, systematic mm -hmm. and that system is unique to each massage practitioner but it generally uh, follows what we think of when we see somebody give a massage you know it starts out on the the back or it starts at the head and neck but it systematically goes uh, either from the torso out to the periphery or the periphery in. And we used to have myths around that. All strokes have to go towards the heart because of the circulation. A lot of those myths are gone now. But the systematic approach allows the massage therapist to know once they have habitualized, that it's a, it's a habit, mm -hmm. that they can move they can move their mind from paying attention to how many times am I going to touch this and what pressure am I going to use to touch this and where am I going to go after this and how do I drape this and how do I bolster that? And how am I going to do that all in about an hour? Yeah. Go, once you have that, once you have that system, then you can move to your, your intuition. Mm -hmm. What and I'm always looking for what's working well, mm -hmm. where as opposed to what's wrong, it's what's going well. That, that moves really good. That tissue slides good. That fluid is consistent in through there. But in that process, I'll notice where things aren't as efficient as they could be. But that's a difficult um, philosophy, I feel like, for most people to uh, fully um, digest is the pay attention to what's working well and help facilitate things that are still functioning well to continue functioning mm -hmm. well, if not even give them a little boost to function a little bit better, but not to be in that pathogenic. The philosophies are what? It's pathogenic or it's salutogenic. salutogenic. And salutogenic is the philosophy we tend to talk more about in that it's it's a movement towards health. Movement towards health and identifying how can we continue to help the body operate as efficiently as possible, as opposed to thinking first about what isn't working well, what the problem is. And how do we but, treat that? And in a pathological or a, a pathology approach, by nature, we're going to narrow way down on yep. a spot right. or a function right. or a hormone yep. or whatever, and we're going to treat that yeah and you know uh, the medical establishment is really pretty good at that yeah and I am thrilled that they're there I would be dead mm -hmm. they <laughs> you know they they fixed they were mechanistically fixed a heart yep all right so I'm alive right yep. I take a hormone replacement medication for yep. thyroid yep that's terrific yep um, but the holism, mm -hmm. the idea of quality of life and all of the different aspects of that, body, mind, spirit, or client-centered approach, or uh, the uh, uh, bio-social cycle. Yeah, bio-cycle social. Yeah. Yes. That is about whole, wholeness. Wholeness. It, and you identifying that by having a pattern that you follow so that you can have it so well ritualized and uh, memorized mm -hmm. that you don't have to be thinking about what is the sequence of each body area you're going to That's affect, right. how you're going to get to it, where you stand, what techniques work the best, what parts of your body work best to do massage on each one of these areas. Um, repositioning and bolstering, all of it, all that has to get below the nose to the point that once you're there, right. now you can be paying more attention to what you're feeling. And when, when you at first, this is more for the beginners, but I think it's for everybody. If we pay very close attention to where everything is working well and get in tune with the skin is moving well. This muscle tone feels about right. This this joint moves correctly. It doesn't have a hard end feel. The range seems fine. The person's able to do it, mm -hmm. etc. Et then when something shows up, 
that is not functioning quite as ideally, then it's a much clearer contrast. Yeah. And that compare and contrast is something that we get. The whole body approach allows us mm-hmm. to do something as simple as work, identify where the symptom and the problem seems to be. Let's say it's pain and movement of a shoulder. But if you work on everything else and pay attention to what you're feeling, and this is the massage as assessment yes. principle that you usually talk about, that I think gets confusing, but the idea being that if you... Just do a patterned, full-body massage while paying attention Mm -hmm. to what's moving correctly. More so even initially than what's not moving correctly. Exactly. Then you'll have a lot of good information to work off of to figure out what your treatment plan and your game plan is for the future. So that first session with people tends to be a full-body good massage where the therapist's mind is more thinking from an assessment perspective yes. and then we can get into the how do i tailor this more and more specifically to a person well and then you can look at you know a lot of the methods that are out there <sighs> modalities whatever you want to call them um, we have a real language problem in the right. massage. Right. <laughs> what style of massage is that? Yeah. What, te- what technique is that? <laughs> they really, they really boil down to interventions. Right. The, you know, there's an, uh, maybe an assessment quality to it, but uh, these interventions typically involve looking for what's wrong. Right. And introducing something, you know, a position. Uh, a pressure, a pull, um, Where a hot, yeah. a cold. <laughs> Find something that's too much, make it less. Yeah. Find something that's too little and make it more. Right. A lot of systems, it's balance. So it can be a meridian energy flow thing, or it could be a physical therapy perspective of what is functioning too strong right. or too weak. There's a lot of this identifying balance you know so when you separate out and teach an intervention it becomes it's like it's it's that picture of the elephant where you've got people blindfolded and they're trying to touch the elephant (laughs) identify what it is it's an elephant (laughs) right but no it's a snake (laughs) (laughs) i learned trigger point therapy yeah yeah therefore that's my intervention, but I but how did I find where the trigger point was, mm. or uh, am I going to think in a lot of the a lot of perspectives, especially culturally based perspectives? It was a line and point system. It was a it, you know it developed over eons of wisdom developed through trial and error. And and the most common one of those that we tend to have influenced in massage is the meridian and acupuncture or acupressure based systems which have even influenced more modern perspectives like shiatsu but it's a the the map and the uh that is followed for the series of applications and even the interventions used is associated with that perception of anatomy that I'm following this line and yeah. following these points. And right. we've had that happen now with, uh, even in a, quote, westernized version um, of fascial planes or fascial yeah. lines. We've yeah. got the front line and the side line and the spiral line yeah. and all of that. It's just, it's That's what's happening in your head. Yep. All right? Um, so a lot of these different styles and forms and, philosophies that's what's happening in your head Mm -hmm. it's happening in your belief system and i think sometimes that is important for a therapist to feel grounded and have a have a way of thinking that keeps them present in the moment caring about the person and thinking about what the outcome is that that positive intention Mm -hmm. being imbued upon the experience that also one I think it does help focus a person's um, energy and and attention, but it, it, it um, 
creates a mechanism where they can be more mindfully, yeah. systematically work themselves through it. So it can be I'm following a reflexology chart so that I know where I'm going to start and where I'm going to go. And I can follow all these various systems and patterns, and they're all great. They all have beautiful nuances behind them, but it's tough when systems that get more formalized, usually for teaching. Yes. Usually in pieced. educational yes. systems. <laughs> how do you chop this very nuanced, complex system up into parts so you can make it more easy to teach people? And then you just get, and then it starts turning into much more specific styles and techniques. And less variation, and you do it like this. Right. You know, uh, you had asked me how I pulled all this together, and I had said, well, I just went, I had, it was in the 80s, I was seeking, seeking teachers, right? I'd already been doing massage. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm seeking teachers, and I'm going from this teacher to this teacher, and I, I did myofascial approaches, I did neuromuscular stuff, I did pol- a lot of polarity stuff, I did a lot of adjunct, like the hydrotherapy. And pretty soon, it, it all felt like I was just hearing, I was doing, I was doing the same thing over and over, but I had to learn a different language for each system. Right. The, that got frustrating. The applications tend to be the same. It's, They're not that much you're different. You're applying force into the body. It's a push or a pull with a uh, intended outcome, an intended response. But then, yeah, the language gets weird and the explanations get weird. Yes, the narratives got very strange. And that's all fine to a certain extent, a certain extent but it also just boils down to, for me especially for beginners, what's the most efficient initial approach that accomplishes the most? The most potential for benefit. Of course, we're always starting with the do no harm perspective, but massage, as long as you are slow and (laughs) mindful about what you're doing, is a very safe approach. We have to be careful about some very beginning foundational things, making sure a person the, um, the environment's safe. Yes. And clean. Like sanitation and cleanliness as part of this mechanism. But then that the draping is good and efficient so that a person feels um, protected safe. and safe. Yes. But also warm and cozy. Yeah, that's right. That the bolstering is sufficient for the same purpose. But in that, multiple positions where the bolstering can be used tactfully in such a way already is helping facilitate some cool things related to the joints and for fluid movement dynamics and breathing and breathing so there's a method to this madness of the overarching philosophy that i mean that you and i thus conversely are coming from in that how do we take all these philosophies and all these tools and think more from a practical toolbox, outcome-based perspective. And a lot of it, when I come down to it, I go, why not try to do a little bit of everything and not too much of any one thing? That the general full body try to affect muscle tone and joints, fluid movement, blood and lymph, and breathing. If I can always be trying to do those things a little bit and then and then start figuring out where should I have a bit more focus, voila. Well, I've, always, I've used the analogy of uh, housekeeping a yeah, lot. Yeah. You know, when we live in our environment, it, it becomes used. It becomes messy. Mm-hmm. Um, just daily accumulation of dust you know, it, <laughs> and um, when we go through to clean it, we have a methodology on how we do it. We right. use suction, we yeah. the yeah. vacuum, we yeah. use gliding, yeah. you know, yeah. we dust, <laughs> we sweep, <laughs> you know, yeah. we use some hydrotherapy, yeah. you know, with yeah. some water and yeah. hot and cold. Yeah. So, if something's very sticky, you might need a little bit more time All there. All right, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So then, you know, then you find, oh, 
I forgot about the, you know, I, I haven't moved, looked behind the couch in forever. Mm-hmm. And that's going to take a little bit more effort. So I might use an intervention there. Um, and then maybe something breaks. You know, now I have to repair. Repair. And um, I, I can clean around things and I can encourage optimal function but if I have something broke like a plug an electrical plug won't work or something now I need more specialized training I need a specialist that knows how to do that right and that's how I I see the kind of the hierarchy here and um, we all we all want to work together, but come from our strengths mm-hmm. and what we can offer an individual. Um, but most important is the safety of what they live in, their body, right. the function of what they live in with their body, and it and that's not fancy. That <laughs> no, and we get to package this therapy into what is meant to what people are looking for they want an uh, at least if not a pleasant experience one that feels um substantial or effective like it's accomplishing There's, something. yeah it's so essential essential is a better so an essential experience but that is predominantly passive Right. And, and one in which the environment is calming. There's a lot of things working in our favor that we can create spaces and environments that are soothing, ideally. Uh, ideally. But then the the ritualized pattern, people talk about the flow of the massage. Yeah. Or the confidence of a therapist's touch and how that can influence the experience. That just comes from experience. That's experience and having a pattern that you're so good at. That you, it's clear that you are smoothly transitioning mm-hmm. from one area to the next. And so that's just the essential piece of, at the very beginning, of honing in on these patterns and sequences. And then within that, being good at using at least a couple parts of your body to interface with each part of the body and manipulate the tissues and or joints in a few directions or with a few different types of forces. So in massage, what are the main, although in some styles and forms, it may be just one technique or application, but what basically are the applications that or tools that we use well, in each area of it, the body? If yeah, we so we use to apply the force Mostly not, but it's just as effective if you use your feet. Shins. Yeah. yeah. Um, is, uh, but we tend to use uh, hands and forearms. And you had asked me, how did I become so proficient? Or how did I even think to use my forearms? And I had to think about that for a minute. And I said, my hands hurt. there was no mystery there no magic no you know my hands hurt (laughs) and i still have four more massages to do yes (laughs) but i think a realization stumbling upon one it's it covers more area yeah it's more efficient yeah and it's it's more efficient in that it's accomplishing more on the body. It's more efficient in that you can the therapist can use their body more effectively by eliminating the delicate use uh, overuse of our hands. And so fingers. you know, just real practical, nothing complicated. No, better to use a broad base compression because it's also safer. Yes, it is. And even from a safety perception standpoint regarding the. Uh, the full body approach with massage where therapists get seem to get hung up in general with really doing a true full body is that they'll leave a client face down and prone mm-hmm. for most of the massage and that's 
because if you don't get proficient at learning a pattern where you drape and bolster in such a way to get access to the rest of the body in a way that you feel confident with, thus so that the client feels safe. Um, so what are the common areas that don't get addressed? Around the pelvis, the chest, the abdomen. Therapists don't work their inner thigh, mm -hmm. you, know, inner re, you know, inner portions of the, especially the legs. And that's where it just turns into a true full body. As long as a person can comfortably lay in each of these positions um, is best facilitated by doing sideline. Yes. And supine. All four positions. Prone, one side, another side, and then supine. And they're seated, too. Yes, true. And um, I actually, years and years ago, was taking some shiatsu approaches. Because I went through all, I learned these modalities and methods. Because right. yeah. uh, that's what was available, you, learn, you know. And um, the thing I took from that was the sideline position hmm. and how much easier it was on me, right. me, to address a lot of the areas and to introduce a therapeutic um, uh, nudge right. towards better breathing or whatever. And uh, it was the sideline position. And so, but you're not going to help somebody breathe better if you're not addressing, let's say, muscles and connected tissues of the chest and the shoulder neck area. Right. And one of the most efficient ways to get to this area, for example, is somebody laying on their side. Well, and then you mentioned the inner thigh. You yeah. know, the the we talked about points and lines. Right. They're in the fascial grooves. Right. And um, the, the uh, nerves and the major circulatory vessels are in the inside. Yep. Um, and because people are attentive to and should be uh, aware of appropriate touch, non-sexual touch, uh, we've almost overcompensated and that worked in these areas that are vital, which right. is inner thigh, abdomen, anterior chest. In a way that we can work in those areas with it not having that misperception. That's exactly right. Is most easily facilitated if it's just not your hands. If, hey, that's if, right. <laughs> if you use a forearm on the hip flexors or the muscles of the hip, gluteus maximus. Whatever. Right? The forearm has a different perception. That's right. A forearm on the pectoralis major muscle of the chest has a different perception than an open palm application. Or a soft fist, even. Soft fist and forearm just, not only are they efficient tools for application, but they offer us that added perceptual nuance of making the touch safer while it also yes. being more efficient so it's just a case of forearms forearms and sideline are a secret sauce to a lot of this yeah it, it makes a huge difference mm -hmm. and it's one of the you know you also asked a question as we were preparing for mm -hmm. this discussion what do you what's different what do you put in the textbooks what what is Therapeutic massage. When I wrote these books back in the day, uh, the generalized approach was what we think of as the Swedish classical. Mm -hmm. And it's a good form. Right. Um, it, there's five basic meth approaches. Yep. And you use them in sequence. And you use them almost everywhere. Yeah. Yep. You know, so, but. That's too limited. It's a unique style and form. And so when I was, I had to, if this is gonna be massage as it is evolved and it evolving, it had to be bigger yes. than that. But the, the gliding, the kneading, the joint movement, the, those are gonna show up in a 
classical massage form. And a lot of those are going to show up in your point and line systems. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the tenets there is, is that lots of times that's performed over clothing. Right. So you can't get the glide. Yep. And that kind of is one of the major things different from a Western approach and a and more Eastern approach. And that we do massage up on a table. Right. As opposed to a mat on the floor um, and there's a lot of move back to that and over the clothing kinds of things because you don't have to worry about the draping you don't have to worry about uh, the misperception of the touch you know so we're seeing more of that being included mm -hmm. the thing we have to remember is is that you have to start from the basics. Right, which is, as you mentioned, the table. There's an understanding of how to use the equipment. Yes. To facilitate your overarching outcome, which is a full body massage that is a pleasant and essential experience for the client that is ideally tailored to what their outcome is so that being um, the table needs to be set up in such a way that they can be comfortable that I can drape efficiently that I can bolster efficiently so that everything is conducted as efficiently as possible That's right. and part of that is all looped into that ritual and routine that when it's um, so memorized that thus we are able to pay more atten attention to our intuition. Absolutely. Right. And the, the, that's the essence right. of what's going on. And, and so when you ask me, My what boy. is massage? <laughs> massage is just soft tissue manipulation. Right. Whatever you call it. Yeah. Lots of professionals do that. Massage therapy and being a massage therapist is bigger than that. And part of that really honoring that more the totality yes. of the body. And, 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 initially, the and initially just striving to tell beginners or advanced practitioners to remember that our greatest strength really is in that generalized aspect. And something I wanted to pinpoint a little bit is, is that even if we start talking about very isolated specific results what mechanism of massage seems to be the best tactic to use to to accomplish that whether it be and we'll go through them if it's help a person with um, breathing pattern disorder related to stress What's the best approach? General full body massage. Okay. If they need help with fluid movement, whether it be circulation of blood or it be uh, getting lymph back to the core, what's the best overall? Approach? General full body massage. If they need help with pain management, especially chronic pain management. Yeah, full body massage. Uh huh. Mobility, which is not as, as much for formulated, <laughs> but since the Parts and pieces are so interconnected. You, you can't. You can't you're, even if it's a knee issue, you need to go look at the hips and the ankles, and you might as well go look at the shoulders and wrists and elbows. So that it's a full body massage. massage. And a principal component of that being that we position the client in such a way that it is a true full body. Meaning prone side side supine thus we're achieving more of a true application of a full body of approach and the tissues are being manipulated in more directions the joints are being moved multiple times so much is hidden there and i know sometimes it can be frustrating to hear that the best approach is not the specific one. It isn't. But it hasn't stood one. up. It's the general approach that has stood up to research scrutiny. And that's good. Yes, you gotta 
I think we need to, as a profession, really learn to um, uh, honor and be proud of that more general whole body um, aspect that we have the time and means to mm -hmm. accomplish for people. And we can bring in so many other philosophies of client-centered based approaches where a person comes to us and feels truly listened to and considered, the environment's nice, the applications are shifted in such a way, pressure delivery, mm -hmm. everything to where it feels it's all about making it about them. You call it the yeah. just right. The just right, that threshold, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. The just right. And, you know, just kind of wrap this around and bring it around is we're trying to set a stage here mm -hmm. for those skills, those basic foundational skills that are the underpinning component of all of the methods uh, that you are... Um, within the scope of practice of massage therapy. And so in the next series, we'll, we'll get into smaller chunks yeah. of um, visiting more specific parts of this whole process, which is, you know, table height, draping, and the beginnings of a sequence to follow. That there's a lot of thought yes. in trying to take all these, all these components and make it simple enough to initially learn but part of at least my big focus <laughs> in Colby that that initial pattern has enough hiding under the surface that we've really thought it through I promise you <laughs> that um that a lot of the more specific outcomes are already going to be accomplished by, embedded. Uh, by, by embedding and honoring that that, that uh, systematic, full body, in about an hour, mm -hmm. massage. And that's massage. It's more, the techniques aren't that complicated. No, they're not. How intuitively you're thinking and as you build out a better awareness of the human body. You know, and that takes time. Yep. It takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. It certainly doesn't happen in a weekend. You know, it it's it doesn't happen in our entry level course. We no. set the groundwork so that you'll get there. Right. You know, and it takes all. It's really hard mm -hmm. to make things simple. Yes. <laughs> With that. And that's the goal. <laughs> Ta da! Ta da! Ta -da. <laughs>